The New Marketing Show is brought to you by Trinity Web Media. Trinity Web Media solves business problems through effective digital marketing. TrinityWebMedia.com. Welcome to the New Marketing Show, produced by Trinity Web Media. I think this week's episode is brought to you by Piss and Vinegar. I've been on fire this week. And here is my co-host, Kevin Everly. Kevin, how are you? Doing well, Greg. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. Hey, you didn't expect that intro, did you? No, that was good. I like that. I mean, you know, I, I can't tell you everything. I, I, I got to leave a little bit of surprise yeah. here, and, here and there for you, right? All I can say is there's worse things to be filled of. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen to that. So how are you? How are, how are things going with Trinity Web Media in New Jersey? Busy, busy couple of weeks here. The exciting news that you know, I'm sure the audience will hear about as that unfolds a little bit more. But you know, good, great clients opening into different verticals. That's always exciting. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I've I really enjoyed, and you know, and I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our listeners. You know, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for uh, are subscribing to the show and sharing the show and dealing with me sharing the show and all of that stuff. You know, without our listeners. You know, it's just you and me talking, and we do that enough, so what the hell? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we appreciate the audience. <laughs> Definitely. So today I thought that we would talk about and flip the script a little bit. You know, the, the new marketing show talks about solving business problems through effective marketing. So let's get a little bit of a different spin on things. You know, I've had some experiences lately where brand the brand experience hasn't quite been where I – would certain things haven't quite been where, where I want it to be or, or how, how I anticipated. And I want to talk about how breaking the brand causes business problems. What do you think about that? Great topic and not something discussed very often, you know, that I've heard about at least. And I, I do have to say, you know, I, I, we spoke this weekend and you were standing next to Vince Gilligan. Does breaking the band have to do anything with that? <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you know, a little bit. So I did, uh, I had an opportunity to meet, long, long story long, I guess, right? Uh, we were at the NAMM show this weekend in Anaheim, the, the uh, North American Music Merchants show. And uh, I, was, I was standing on line to get a, an adult beverage of my choice. And uh, I was a little out of character, a little out of context. I got a Michelada. And normally, you know, I'd go for something a little bit different. And as I was placing my order, somebody walked past me and I said, I know who this freaking guy is. I know who he is. I know who he is. And sure enough, it was Vince Gilligan, the creator and the writer of Breaking Bad. And uh, by the time I had a, a moment you know, for him to take a photo with me, uh, he was gone. <clears throat> but, but definitely, you know, definitely a little bit inspired, you know, Breaking the Brand definitely a little bit inspired by Breaking Bad, which is definitely, you know, I think it's, it's one of my favorite TV shows. I think it's one of everybody's favorite TV shows. So, and here we are. I think the only question that myself and some of the uh, audience might have is, what the hell is a Michelada? Whoa, we, we have a regional dis- <laughs> disconnect here. Uh, a Michelada is sort of like a, it's a Mexican version of a bloody beer. So it is typically like a Corona or Bud Light or Pacifico with Bloody Mary mix in it, with salt on the rim and nice lime and maybe, you know, some other f- flavorful stuff. So there that's you a go. Michelada. Makes perfect sense why I have no clue what it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for asking. There you go. So, yeah, so I thought this would be a great topic because this is something that happens too much in, uh, in our marketing world. And uh, I just want to get your take on things. So before we kind of – reverse engineer and you know explain and discuss some of the issues that breaking that brand experience can cause and you know the problems that that'll lead to down the line what's a brand experience to you greg well that's that's a that's a good question so to me a brand experience is it's the added value and it's the feeling that i get when i use a product or uh enter a restaurant or it, it it To me, a brand experience is having everything line up and it's congruent all the way through from the outside of the building to the decor inside to how I'm greeted. And it's just one congruent, consistent experience that makes things predictable. What, you know, in my mind, why do people like 
to go to Starbucks? Why do people like to go to Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, on the road, why do I hit McDonald's when I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere? You know why? Because I know what to, I know what to expect. And to me, that brand experience is comfortable. And it, 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 it makes sense that when I go in there, that uh, a Starbucks here in Mission Beach, California – is the same thing as a Starbucks in Warren, New Jersey, or Chagrin Falls, Ohio, you know, all across the board, you know, and that's part of building a brand. So, I mean, that, that's what a brand experience is to me. Do you agree, disagree? I think the, the best way to illustrate to me what a brand experience is by sharing my favorite. Um, my, by far, my favorite brand experience is coming home with any Apple product. Good, good call. Good call. You know, the first time I bought a MacBook and I was able to not have to open something, but seamlessly slide a box open. There's the computer. You can hit the power button. It's already half charged. You know, and then mm-hmm. the packaging is there. And the, the, the one thing you need to take out is a cord. It's easily accessible. There's a pamphlet. But, you know, peanuts don't spray you in the face. There's You don't need a box cutter or anything to open the box. You know, it's that experience. And it it is like using a Mac on a day-to-day basis. And to me, that set the tone for exactly what to expect from my Mac product. And that's a great example. You know, uh, you you can see on Instagram and on various websites, you know, uh, the act of unboxing, how it's documented. When I get an iPhone, I typically get an iPhone – Every other upgrade, I'm not like a, an I've uh, such a fanboy that I have to get the latest greatest. Yeah, about that. Or unless I do something stupid and it falls out of a kayak and it falls in the ocean to the depths of the sea. But when you unbox that iPhone, and I don't give a shit whether it was the iPhone one which I got to right now. What am I rocking? An iPhone seven S or eight eight S or whatever the hell it is. Right? I'm not super slick and super cool. Got to you know. The, the $1,000 one. But the thing is, is that when I, oh, when I get the cellophane off of the box, I take the box open, it's the same experience. Now, can you imagine if instead of when, when I open that box, there isn't like the, the shiny phone looking at you, there's a bunch of cellophane or there's a, you know, or it's wrapped or something like that. And it's like, not the way that I expect it. You know, I've been doing thing. I've been doing it and, and <clears throat> using the product for so long that I I've become accustomed to the experience that I'm gonna I'm gonna get. Can you imagine if they didn't misspell your name terribly or give you some kind of goofy ass name when you went to Starbucks or a coffee? I mean, like that's I'm joking, of course, but like that's all part of the brand experience. It's sort of expected. Can you imagine walking into Starbucks and they did and they were wearing? You know, orange aprons instead of green ones. Bow ties or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's all part of the brand experience. And I think that the more that you can tie in experience with your brand and make it consistent and congruent to the way things always are or always have been traditionally, I, I think that the, the more predictable the experience is going to be. Now, when you... When, when you give a client a, a predictable experience, what you're doing is you're starting to make them comfortable. You're allowing them to act in a manner that, you know, they're accustomed to acting or behaving on, and, intera- and interacting more than acting, actually. And what happens is they become eventually, if that brand experience is strong enough, they become brand loyalists. So that's, that's a big okay. takeaway for me. So when you when you talk about brand experience, is that you know you want more or less the experience and presentation of everything that brand does to tie into the brand's attributes, its services, how they operate, what they believe in, and it all to encompass you know in that box more or less. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the more predictable, sure. we're creatures of habits, right? You know, our buying patterns are habitual. You know, uh, the products that we use, if the experience is there, are typically the same. I mean, I've been using a MacBook now for, you know, I can't even remember how long. You know, when I play golf, I use Titleist. I hit Titleist golf balls. I play Fender guitars because that experience of using the product, uh, that experience of researching the product on the web to go in the music store 
and looking at the product and demoing the product to bringing it home, unboxing and, and playing the product all provides the same type of feeling. And what you're doing is, you know, you're giving somebody an experience and the experience can be a good one. Well, think about the example I used, you know, uh, I unopened a tool more or less a computer. You know, it's a, it's, it's something I need for work. It, it, you know, I open it and me opening it became the experience. Right. I mean, you know, to you and I, you know, it, unboxing and opening the computer is the same thing as maybe a carpenter feels as he goes and gets his hammer. You know, that's a tool that he needs for his job. And it, it creates the same type of feeling. You know, I, I usually, you know, I love the, the analogy of the Mercedes Benz experience, right? People who purchase Mercedes Benz, half of buying, half of owning a Mercedes Benz sure. is the buying experience. Sure. You know, that they guide you through and, you know, they guide you through it and the test drive and how, you know, the salesperson the, interacts with you. You know, <clears throat> I think years ago, a great brand experience was always Uber. As I used Uber, I was so brand loyal to Uber for so long because I could be in San Diego, New York, San Francisco, Phoenix. I could be wherever. And I typically know that all I need is a, my phone being charged and I'm going to get a ride. I'm going to have a predictable experience in a similar type of car that I can't get from like a yellow cab. You, you know, uh, I think that that is no longer true for that brand. I think that they've gone through their ups and downs and their trials and tribulations where now, you know, it used to be really hard to get a really? job driving for Uber. Now everybody drives for Uber and everybody that I see who drives for Uber, Lyft. who else do they drive for? Drive, drive for Lyft. Also they drive for the competition. I 50, I would say between 55 to 75 percent of the time I take an Uber, there's a Lyft sticker right next to the Uber sign. Sticker. Yeah, to me that makes no sense. That makes no makes no sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it makes sense for the driver. I mean, if Uber didn't have their brand challenges and their brand experience didn't go to shit, there you know they wouldn't mm-hmm. you know there would be no option. For the longest time, you know, I was passenger number three when Uber launched in. Three, really, my friend Gabe. <laughs> yeah, my friend Gabe Williams was a uh, community manager in Phoenix, and, and he still works with Uber. But and he gave me a tip. He's like, "Hey, we're doing a soft launch today," and I I had the app because I was in San Francisco all the time working, and I used Uber religiously. And this is when Uber, it was only Uber Black, and where it was like, you know, it, it was it was costly. You know what I mean? It wasn't like Uber X or you know any, or Uber Pool or any of that stuff, but. That experience is not the same any longer. So w- what's happened is I think it's been like two months ago. Two months ago, I downloaded the Lyft app. Two months. Yeah, two months ago. So, I mean, something has, has changed. But brand experience, if you don't give your, your, your clients, your prospects, anybody that comes in, any touches with your brand, the same experience, there's going to be a disconnect. Okay. So let's talk, let's talk about some of like, you know, what are the, what's the effects that those disconnects cause for well, the business? The, the first thing is, so w- one of the disconnects in my mind is the, the, the overall experience of using the product, you know, am I going to get the same, you know, when, uh, you know, uh, w- when somebody pulls up and it's a, a lesser caliber car, I don't listen. I'm not so fu- so pretentious that I have to drive or be driven around in a BMW or a Lexus or anything like that. You mm-hmm. know, I myself drive a Corolla. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So it's like when somebody pulls up, you know, in a beater. All of a sudden, I'm like, wait a second now. Now, okay. To be fair to Uber, they don't allow. You know, they, they do mm-hmm. have they do have standards for their their vehicles, but you know when or the person you know isn't dressed. The way if the guy's dressed in basketball shorts and a t-shirt, all of a sudden I'm kind of put off and mm-hmm. saying, okay, well, wait a second, what's going on here? If I ever you know use a brand on and on over and over and over, and I have to say that and I say to myself, hey, what's going on here? The brand experience is broken. 
So <clears throat> as soon as you begin to question that brand experience, you know, that's when, you know, the whole you as a, you as the consumer begin to get worried about whether it's operations, things changing, you know, your level of consistency is not going to be the same. That's the concern. That's part of it. And the other thing is I lose trust. You know, that's the, that's the biggest point that I want to say is like when things aren't and like, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not so pretentious that I want, you know, I don't want someone to open the door for me. I don't need any of that stuff, but I just, I, I in my mind, if it doesn't meet my expectation, the brand starts to break my trust. Now, breaking my trust is the quickest way for me to look toward to other brands. Now, could you imagine here? <clears throat> and if, if you have somebody who's opening up, uh, if, if you have a, a, a restaurant that you go to all the time <clears throat> or you use a service all the time and their logo is, let, let's say that their logo and, and their signage is typically green and green, gold and brown. Right. And then they're opening up another location somewhere else. And the coming soon sign is red and yellow. I mean, resembling McDonald's fast food color, you know, that's where your mind jumps kind of immediately. And, and, and my mind also goes, what the hell's going on here? Wait a minute. Is this a company? And, and then, you know, start thinking about things critically. Hey, is this the same company? Hey, is it owned by the same people? That's why franchises are that's why franchises are so popular. You know, if you go to like an Alpha Graphics who, you know, I cut my teeth in the business world with, you know, I know the brand very very well. If I went to an Alpha Graphics and it wasn't red and white and it was like blue and yellow, I would say is this just something else that is, you know, biting off the name or is this something else that, you know, isn't the exact same thing? Am I in the right place? You know, and if, if you ever walk into somebody and say, if you ever walk into a, a place and say, am I in the right place or is this where I should be? There's a problem. So that makes perfect sense. And, you know, I think it's one of the world's probably best known marketers, correct me if I'm wrong, that said this, but you begin to lose a client the day you book them. Who, who says that? Who's quoted that? Don Draper. The. The only fictional character that's probably the best known market. Ah, oh, Don Draper, the famous Don Draper of Mad Men. Absolutely not. Do you think? Okay, <clears throat> Don Draper. Do you really think that's a fictional character? I think that's that. I think that's a real character made up of a whole different pe- bunch of people. I was going to say that's totally an amalgam of you know twelve different versions of Don Draper. So I had this friend who actually met. Uh, who, John, who's yeah. John? Uh, who, who's who's the actor that plays Don Draper? Uh, John Hamm. <clears throat> he actually met him in in Hollywood. And my friend was doing. Uh, my friend was running the the pay per click ads for a an adult site, very well established, big big brand adult site. And my friend, uh, a couple of cocktails in him, went up and he said to John Hamm, "Hi, John. It's very nice to meet you. They call me the Don Draper of porn." <laughs> you know what that's a true story and i'll tell you what <clears throat> let's do this this will be our first the new marketing show giveaway i will give away a full website audit on any of your web properties if somebody can leave a comment on itunes podbean <laughs> iHeartRadio, or stitcher where our show is syndicated if they can tell me who that was so identify the Don Draper of porn, and we'll work for you for free. Yeah, uh, exactly, because, because it's, it's, it's that classic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there was a time in my life I, th- I wanted to be Don Draper. I thought that that was going to be my marketing life. Was gonna be, you want to talk about a disconnect? <laughs> somebody, sold me, somebody sold me a dream, but man, it was a, somebody sold me a dream, and I think it was A, somebody else's fucking dream, and it was not the dream that came true. And, you know, my marketing dream is – Way different, and I'm way more stoked on what we're doing. So, <clears throat> so you, have you had any brand? Have you had any brand experiences where you felt such a disconnect that you were you were put off, and you said, "I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to keep this brand in my my repertoire or close to me any longer." Absolutely. So, this may not be a great example of one brand disconnect, but it, it will totally illustrate mm-hmm. the point. 
I live in a rural area. Uh, we do have an Amish market. If you walk in that Amish market and look <laughs> directly left, the first thing you see yeah. is a sushi. Okay. Sushi shop. And what town is that? What town is that in? That's in Flemington, New Jersey. There, there, you know, and to me that always stunned me because every every other vendor there is pretty Amish and you know, uh, in the traditional Amish, you know, and and also of Amish quality product. I mean, growing up on the East Coast and and spending my time, you know, skateboarding and stuff like that in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, you know, or out uh, out in like a state college, like where Woodward where Woodward Skate Camp is and all that stuff. I understand the Amish ethos and the, the quality that you get. It's amazing. It is behind the shop right in Flemington. And the fresh food that, you know, you, you can trust is cheaper than supermarket. It's amazing. Yeah, and that's, that's a perfect example. Like you expect to have this experience with not only a, you know, with a, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to belittle the religion and the lifestyle as saying a brand, but like, but but you expect one certain type of experience. But because where they put their their brand, right, of goods selling, all of a sudden it's not the same experience that you would have had you gone to a typical thing. So this leads me to to ask, what types of what types of business challenges, what types of business problems do you think occur when the brand is broken? You know, I thought about this a little bit. Since we began talking, and I think one would definitely be hesitant, hesitant from uh, your target audience. If your brand doesn't appeal to your target audience on the outside as well as in, you're going to have a hard time getting people in the door. If your website doesn't match what, uh, you know, inside of your shop and the friendly feel, if it's, if it's cold or whatever, you're going to have hesitance. I also think at least.